Hey everyone. So in this video, we're going to go through the steps you'll be taking to create your 3D bone for your simulation testing in biomechanics using SOLIDWORKS. So to start off, we want to actually go to the Excel sheet that you'll be given that allows you to put the last four digits of your RIN uh, to get an output for your length, outer diameter, and inner diameter values. So if we just put one, two, three, four, you'll see that for this video, I'll be using 480 millimeters for the length, 25.1 for the outer diameter, and 11.3 for the inner diameter of the bone. So we're going to go back to our SOLIDWORKS, and we're going to go up here to the New Document button. Make sure Part is selected, and then press OK. Now you're here in the creation space. Um, with the creation space, uh, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, but let's start off by looking at the coordinate system on the bottom left, which will make it a lot easier for you to draw objects and whatnot. Um, and this coordinate system allows you to pick the plane you're looking at and kind of give you like an orientation. And you don't really see it here because you have nothing drawn. So let's go to the top left, click on Sketch, and then click on the circle. And now you'll see that there's a plane. And if you use your middle mouse button, you'll also be able to move around and rotate and whatnot and see what planes you're working with. But let's focus on the top plane. So we need to click on the Y axis. We're looking down on the Y axis now. And this is the top plane. If we click on the top plane while we're ready to draw our circle, you'll see that the, the drawing will now be restricted only to this plane. I like to further restrict my, uh, my drawings to the origin because it allows me to make concentric circles and squares and different objects or different shapes um, when I'm drawing. So we're going to just make our circle like that and it is now centered at the origin. But we need to give this the correct dimensions. So we're going to go to, go to the top left for a smart dimension and then we're going to click on our circle and you'll see it gives us a diameter. So in this case, this is going to be the outer diameter and we're going to make this 25.1 millimeters. All right. So now that we've got that, we have a 2D, 2D drawing in a 3D space and we want to make that a cylinder. So we're going to go to features on the top left, go to extruded boss base right above it. And then now you'll see a yellow projection, which is going to be your extrusion for this, uh, this, uh, this little circle that we've made. On the left side, you'll see uh, 10 millimeters being highlighted, and this is actually going to be um, the length of your bone. This is the extrusion height. So we're going to make this 480 millimeters. You'll see the yellow extrusion projection just got a lot taller. So if we click on the check mark on the left side, this will finalize our extrusion, and now we have a cylinder that we can work with. There we go. So we need to make the cylinder hollow to simulate a bone. So in order to do that, we need to go back to our sketch tab, click on the circle again, and then we're gonna select a plane to draw on. So we, I'm gonna pick the top plane of the uh, cylinder, and you'll see it's highlighted now. So if we make this concentric with the cylinder itself, uh, it'll make a circle right here around the origin, and then we'll have, we're going to make this our inner diameter. So we we'll go to Smart Dimension, click on our circle, we get a diameter value. We're going to make that 11.3 millimeters. And now we have a 2D drawing on a single face of this cylinder. So we need to go back to our Features tab on the top left. We're going to click on Extruded Cut. So now you'll see that this has selected the circle, and then it is going to draw a line and cut through the entire object that you've drawn. So it's going to be a hollow cylinder when we're done. So if we click on the OK button, uh, the check mark on the left side, you'll see that it has cut through the cylinder, and now we have a hollow bone-like uh, bone shape. But we're still not done. We need to edit the material of this, of this uh, shape to make it so that it reacts to stresses and forces like a bone would. So on the left side, you'll see 
something called material. We're going to right click that and then press edit material. So it's going to take a little bit for the window to pop up. So we're going to actually look at the values that we are going to use for this. So this, these are the values for a middle aged bone, uh, just estimated values uh, for the properties that we will be changing. So we're going to have the Young's modulus at 16 gigapascals, the shear modulus at 3.7 gigapascals, the Poisson's ratio at 0.3, uh, 0.31, the uh, mass density at 1840 kilograms per meter cubed, um, tensile strength at 111 uh, megapascals, compressive strength at 160 megapascals, and yield strength at 90 megapascals. So it's important to have these values uh, to use uh, because otherwise you won't be able to get a correct simulation for the bone um, that you'll be, you'll be testing in your project. So with this window open, uh, we're going to go down on the left side to something called custom materials because we need to make our own material with new properties. So I've labeled this uh, folder as bone, but it is probably something like custom plastics on your, uh, in your program. And then I've already made something called MA bone for middle-aged bone, but it's probably something like plastic uh, on your screen. So if you click on that new, that plastic or in my case, MA bone file here, you'll see uh, a wide variety of different uh, properties that pop up and different wind, um, text boxes that you can edit and whatnot. And uh, we're gonna keep this at linear elastic isotropic. Um, we're gonna assume that the entire material um, of the bone is consistent throughout the whole length. And you can change the category and the name. And then we're going to go down to the properties here. And you'll see elastic modulus and all, all those different uh, material properties that you can edit, which I've already done so. Uh, the thing to be careful here about is the units. So the Young's modulus and the shear modulus that I, uh, I just said were at giga, were gigapascals. Uh, in this case, newtons per millimeters squared is actually megapascals. All of these are megapascals, except of course the Poisson's ratio and the mass density. So you really you want to watch out for that. And make sure you you know uh, type in the the actual value for the unit it is. So once we press apply, you'll see on the left side it's already highlighted that it, the material properties have changed to MA bone, and that means that your your uh, whoop your sample or your, uh, your part is now uh, with the bone material properties. And that's it for this video. Uh, so I hope this helped. Um, help you guys create the, the part that you're going to be using for your simulations throughout the project. And uh, I'll see you on the next video.